Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and welcome to everybody and, and the staff. Good to see everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the members that are here today, the members of the committee, uh, especially the ones that were here in, in 2009 for their vote to create the new Department of Drug and Alcohol Programs. Uh, it, the bill passed out of the House almost unanimously. I think there were two or three negative votes. But uh, back then, it was absolutely the right thing to do. And Madam Secretary, I am just so glad that you recognize that this addiction drug, heroin prescription drug problem is absolutely the number one public health problem that we have in the state of Pennsylvania. And I say this all the time. I am sick and tired of talking to parents with dead kids across the state of Pennsylvania from this garbage. It is heartbreaking, it is tragic, it is senseless, and every one of these steps is absolutely preventable. Uh, first thing I'd like to touch on Narcan, which is an issue you mentioned, uh, Gary, in your opening remarks. This was on the front page of the Bucks County Courier and Times today. Uh, on Sunday, the Lower Makefield Police Department saved a life in Bucks County with the use of Narcan, a police officer used it. I understand yesterday, a second life was saved in Bucks County. Uh, there was an article in the Philadelphia paper in the 25th district, since the police there started using Narcan, they saved five lives since the beginning of February. Delaware County, which started using Narcan right away as soon as we passed the bill, uh, the last number I heard was in the 30s or 40s, the number of lives they saved from uh, using Narcan. I would encourage the three of you to please get the message and the news out that this is available, not only to our first responders, but I think more importantly to the families, because embedded in the bill was language that families are allowed to keep Narcan in their home. I understand around the state some of the families are having a hard time getting a prescription to get the Narcan and use in their home. Please do everything you can to make sure that this Narcan is available not only for the first responders, but to the families who have addicts who are living at home. Really important, it's gonna save lives. Gary, if you just wanna briefly comment it, uh, on that. Mr. Chairman, the, uh, Governor Wolf shares your commitment and passion on this, and I, I just want you to know that we've been having, we've been meeting regularly, uh, both with Secretary Murphy and Physician General Levine and other top officials. Uh, I'm not at liberty to get into details, but I think you're going to be hearing good news over the next couple of weeks, and I'll wait and let until we get the specifics and we're ready to roll that out. But I guarantee you uh, that your sense of commitment on, on doing exactly that is shared by this administration. Great. Great. And, and uh, second, the, the PMP, the Prescription Drug Monitoring Bill, uh, Madam Secretary, I, I'm not quite sure if I heard when that's going to be up and running. Do you have any idea on the time frame when that's going to be up and running? I do not. We are meet, we're beginning to meet within the next two weeks with the advisory board, looking at uh, vendor selection and rolling out a strategic plan. But this is such a critical issue that we will keep you all informed of our progress and uh, what our implementation I, stages are. I did hear are. something that may be June. By June, it might be up. I, I'm not quite sure if that's accurate or not. I would I would rather wait until I'm sure so that I could share that information with you, but I will be back and, and certainly share it with the committee because yeah. I know you're all very interested. I know our doctors and pharmacists are really yes. anxious to get this up and running. Yes. And I talked to my family doctor and she and they say they, they want to use it and look for every patient because the problem is so great and so intense. Absolutely. It, it, yeah, I, I, I just so appreciate that that bill got amended and I know the role you played Chairman DiGirolamo, and, and getting that so far, so family and friends could have it. Uh, anybody with somebody who might be at risk of opioid addiction, and that could be somebody who's just regularly taking prescription opioids who might accidentally mix it. It doesn't have to be someone with an addiction necessarily. Should have naloxone on hand. It could make the difference between a life or death difference for their loved one. So I, I just, you know, since anytime I get a chance to put the word out into the public, I want to put the word out. Go get, go to your doctor. They are meant to give you the prescription for naloxone, and you can go get it filled. It's covered on your insurance. Yeah, you, and Secretary Tennis, you talk about the need for treatment, and I think especially in the cases of heroin and prescription drug, long-term treatment. And you know, there's only a limited amount of dollars. 
That's why I think it was so important that we just decided to expand Medicaid here in Pennsylvania, yes, because that's going to make, make sure that 600 plus thousand Pennsylvanians are going to have a tremendous behavioral health benefit, and with that drug and alcohol benefit, that they're going to be able not only to get into treatment, but also get into treatment for long term. So I think that's going to be really important. Exactly right. Those who are sickest, needle-injecting heroin addicts, for example, <laughs> uh, need long-term residential treatment. Be during the cuts that have occurred, there have been, slowly there have been cuts, I guess about 11 or 12 million over the last six years to the drug and alcohol treatment field. And the, the, air, the level of treatment that has been cut the hardest, hit the hardest, is long-term residential. And that's the level that I, I believe with Medicaid expansion and with the governor's proposed budget, we're going to begin to put that back together. Uh, one, one final question and then a comment. Uh, in Act 50, we had provisions in there that allowed you and gave you the authority to partner, cooperate with the other departments to try to take care of some of this problem with addiction. I, I, are, can you just briefly tell us what you've been doing along those I've lines? I've been kind of having, this, this has been uh, tremendous over the past six weeks. Uh, we, we, have already met with the uh, Secretary of the Department of Transportation. There's a DUI. You, you all passed really good DUI treatment laws that require someone with an alcohol problem who gets caught in a DUI to get treatment uh, as part of their parole. That has not, for the most part, been enforced with fidelity around the county. And we're partnering with PennDOT. They met with Secretary Richards, who was ex as excited about the project as I was to uh, get somebody funded to work with the counties and provide technical assistance to enforce the law that you passed. Um, that's impactful because treatment for DUI offenders is extremely successful, has very high outcomes. For, uh, out of the people in the State Department of Corrections, 5,000 inmates in the state prison system had a prior DUI before they committed the offense that got them locked up. We had an opportunity to treat those people and get them into recovery and into the workplace. Instead, they're sitting in the state prison right now because they went on, they continue to deteriorate. So enforcing that law is going to be very helpful. 60% of DUI offenders have private health insurance that will pay for the treatment. That's one example. Department of State and Department of Health, we're working on the CMEs together. I've met with Department of Community and Economic Development. We're just beginning. Everything is beginning stages. I can't make promises, but about housing money for recovery housing. Uh, uh, I could go on and basically planning. I've got there's something almost for every department, and uh, I can tell you there is a strong level of commitment with all of my colleagues, not just Secretary Murphy and Physician General Levine, but all of the ones I've met with. There is a strong commitment. They have to share the commitment of the members of this group here to to address the problem in a comprehensive way. Yep. And finally, Mr. Chairman, uh, on this medication-assisted treatment. Uh, Something I'm I'm very concerned about, and and, and this is this one drug that's being used, Suboxone. Uh, the doctors, as I understand, are are, are uh, prescribing Suboxone for treatment for those with heroin and opiate use. Down in the southeast, this Suboxone is all over the street. It's all over the street, and. From in my thing, the only way it can, can get out on the street if people are going, getting it prescribed from doctors, and leaving the doctor's office and selling it and going out and buying other drugs. So I, I, something we ought to be looking at. Uh, I, I don't know. I hear the federal government is giving these doctors uh, they, they can have more patients, uh, a, a greater amount of patients. I mean, I think this is something we're going to be really careful about because this is all over the street down in the southeast. Big problem. Right. And if it's one of the requirements of the DEA when someone gets a license to prescribe Suboxone is that the doctors are meant to make sure the patients are getting treatment. Yeah. Because it's medication-assisted treatment. It's the treatment is the core critical piece. Um, and w that's something uh, that came up in a, with our prescribing practices work group. This very same issue was raised, and it's something we intend to be taking a look at. Our, we have limited, my department does not have regulatory authority over this. Uh, in fact, it's really DEA regulated, but it's something we have got to look at and we may, I don't know where we're gonna land with it, but it, you're, you're right, it requires a close look. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman.